the idea of more money is not really to spend on what you need is to basically fu- future proof yourself but if you ask yeah. me this question 10 years ago right definitely I spent all the money on a lot of stuff <laughs> What's up? What's up? What's up? And welcome to our coffee shop. I'm your host, Ting Yong. Welcome to an, an, another episode of the Coffee Bowl Show presented by the Chit Chatter Podcast Network. Now, for those of you tuning in via YouTube or any sort of podcasting platform, hi again. Thanks so much for listening in. We are just a Singaporean duo that wants to win the... Toto! I need money. Give me money. Who doesn't love money? I need money. Okay, now once again, I'm joined by Dad. How are you doing, Dad? I'm good, bro. Like, I think this is like the first first weekend in don't know, and I think about three weeks since I had a break. Wow. What, what, what have you been busy with the past few weekends? Is it because work? If, because I, I work at work as a support for one of our school, uh, school ma. so we've been having like quite oh. a few major events for the past few weekends. So, I see, I see. It's been a bit tiring. La. Like, our <laughs> my team is quite grateful that we have a we finally got a break this weekend. Okay, you support a school or you support a cluster of schools? That's why you are so like... A uh, school. But like, I, get, I, like, cannot, I cannot divulge which school is. I know, I know, I know. But do you all like get like... Let's say you work on weekends, do you get breaks on like Monday or Tuesday this kind of thing? No. Okay. No, That's because fine. it's considered te- technically is additional OT. Ma. Okay, okay. So you, you like... You all do we, OT. We will, get, we will get extra, but uh, yeah. it's... It's also just like you are taking the you when you do OT you know like you're you're doing OT considering the fact that you know that you're gonna work back on Monday again. Ma. Yeah, okay, okay. I I know I know, I know that feeling it kinda of sucks. Huh? So we, <laughs> we 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 kind of like figure out a way to like distribute the load evenly among among our team. La. If let's I see, say I see. S- somebody didn't do the didn't do the work that weekend, then we'll probably have we'll probably say, nah bro, you your load gonna be this, you're gonna be very heavy. So piggyback on Elder's point about working and whatnot, I think all Singaporeans or actually anybody across the world, right? We all have one s- similar dream is that we want to win for one day, like just overnight you become rich one. <laughs> so I just want to ask out that have you saw the news of the recent Toto uh, or mothership or whatever? I think the value is what, 13 million? Yes. It rolled over, I think, the past two, three times. That means nobody won. Then it rolled over for, I think, don't know, three, four times or two, three times. And then it, it finally stopped at the 30 million card. For Toto, right? Like for me, I personally am not a gambling, I'm not a gambling man. I don't okay. try to go and buy the, the, the market and everything like that, right? But I, but once in a while, sometimes you know, like your, your friends always say, hey, go my, buy Toto, la. then you 10 contribute million, 10 like million. 10 million. Okay, <laughs> you contribute like $1, $2, yeah. that, that type of thing, right? So you, you don't mind doing it. La. But if you ask me personally whether I will go to a 4D shop to buy, no. Yeah, la. I mean, the, the queue sometimes I see is just crazy, man. The number of yeah, shops do. doing like, yeah. Even just for a quick pick or to just color the, I don't know what the thing called, the, the iPad or don't what. Then yeah, you yeah. just come into pay. It's crazy, man. I don't know for you, but for me, right, one of the most weird things I ever heard for Toto is that they say there's this thing called beginner's luck. So hmm. when I was working part-time during my uni days, right, actually my managers and my chefs sent me on like regular Toto treats because they say, hey, you like only 20, yeah, early 20s, not even 20 sometimes. Then they say, you go, you buy, it should be can gun. Some of them won before. La, so. With this type of thing, uh, I don't call it luck, I call it fate. Uh. It's like <laughs> you're destined to deal, you deal one. Uh. If you don't deal, you don't deal. I got friends that I know right there. Okay, they try maybe 10 times, 15 times, right? Then they deal what? The B, fourth place, third place. That that thing. Just, maybe just, once or not, twice. Yeah, that's not but then, Do I know anybody that want Toto? No. I really deal once, but how do you say? Uh, okay, so the, the reason why we deal is that uh, my office, we got, we got do the offerings for the seventh month. Yeah. You know, the offerings for the seven month you burn for the so called ghosts. Yeah. And then some of the offerings, they have numbers. Ma. So we actually yeah. went and buy. I we really won, you know. Uh, but it's not a lot. La. It's like consolation price. So it's $200 plus. Dollar. But, okay, actually, what? but the problem is that because this is money to deal with, like this kind of so called supernatural thing, we don't dare to. How do you say? Uh, we don't dare to take all. Like we spend half of it, like really splurging on food and then, like, so called pay your respects back to them by yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. doing the offerings and all these things, but with better food, like array, this kind of thing. So in the end, we didn't, we didn't mean much also. Then the $100 just split between the few of us. I think uh, this was actually mentioned by one of our one of our members is that 
And I think a lot of uncles like to talk about like, hey, what if one day you win Toto, what will you do with it? Okay, so that's why this is our copybo's topic for this week. It is what will you do if you win Toto or 4D? Okay, so to because the news is about the 30 million uh, for a Toto and it was split between four person, but here only got me and Eldad. Yep. So we agreed beforehand that we will split the uh, 30 million between us equally. So each so of us has slightly six, yeah. more than 6 million. Yeah, 6 and a half million. How would you spend your 6.5 million? It's interesting, right? Because when this topic was being brought up, uh, I actually thought about it before like a few times a lot, I see. Yeah. And it's a conversation that come I think I asked Paul this. I see. If you had like, if you had like $6 million or $7 million, like, what would you actually do? La? So one, I'm going to definitely do an investment plan. La. So means mm. that uh, I think probably I'm not looking at a lot. I'm probably looking at a certain amount that every month you can kind of like top up, top up, top up, top up. La. So it means yeah. that I'm not really exactly sure how much it would be, but I will mm. say that maybe you're looking at maybe like 1 million that is going to be spread out over a long, prolonged period of time. So that 1 million is allocated already. I'm not going to mm. do the top up where it's like, oh, I'm going to throw in 1 million immediately. Yeah, I'm going to do like the, maybe a few thousand one month. Now, then the, then it's just every month, just a few thousand, a few thousand, a few thousand, a few thousand. So you'll, you'll carry on paying for this investment thing, is it? Yeah, correct. So it means that it's a continuous, like, it's a continuous thing for predominantly the rest of my life. The second thing is, of course, being a Christian, I will give about 10 to 15% to, for, for church and whichever donation, donation okay. I need to do. So probably if you take about 6 million there, then you're talking about, Almost seven hundred k going to church and religious religious organizations. I minus out one point seven million already. Yeah. Okay. This is where the chaos starts because <laughs> right, I'm a person that when I spend big, I spend big. <laughs> but I also do a lot of nonsense, a lot of stupid nonsense. Right. So the first thing I'm gonna do, right, I go buy a car. Okay. But I'm not gonna buy like a very expensive car. I'm gonna buy like probably a Toyota or Honda, maybe one two. Right. So modest car for someone that likes. No, car. no. Honestly, because I feel that like I thought about it. I would have thought maybe getting a dream car or whichever, right? But I don't think in the long term that would be a good thing. I'll probably use the money down the run to buy a dream car, but I'll probably buy like maybe a, either a Honda Velfire, no, a Toyota Velfire or something like that. Okay. Or something for, for myself, right? Then I hire a driver. Hey, that's a damn good plan. <laughs> I won't have to live in debt with the car. I will just pay off Correct. the car in one shot. Correct. So if you pay off the car in one shot, right? I think probably if I'm not mistaken, a Velfire will cost you less than about 300k or lesser. Yes. About that. So yeah. Actually, people don't understand that sometimes you, you drive a car, it gets very tiring also. Like yeah. even in Singapore where there are short trips. So it's actually quite a luxury to have a driver and then you can say, hey, I want to get to the, the, like this place by what time? And, and then it's very short for you to just sit at the back. Yeah. yeah. Based on the car alone, right? Maybe you lose another 300k. So that's probably mm. maybe about 3.5 million left. Yeah. About 3.5 million left. Uh. I'll buy a house. Oh, you're talking about like... like uh. How to say the bungalow this kind of it's yeah, not like I'll buy a freehold house. I no, it doesn't have to be a bungalow, maybe it might, might be a semi D la. So oh, yeah, uh, okay. you if you were to look at it, sometimes you can find a good house probably maybe about two million. One point yeah. something to two million. So once you have mm. that already, I'm set for my future already. I own the land. Mm. The land's not gonna get taken from me. So yeah. I'll have that already, right? So I'm left with maybe about another one and a half million left. La. Okay. So that one and a half million left, right? I'll just uh, put five hundred into any five hundred thousand, uh, to an emergency account. Then that what? Then the remaining one million, I will probably decide whether I want to invest in in other stuff already, or I just splurge one shot. What will you splurge on? This one I'm interested. Okay, splurge. Uh. I'll probably buy a Rolex. <laughs> buy a Rolex Yacht Master, the, the one with the okay. gray, the gray face. So that yeah, one is one. Nice one. Maybe throw in some money into this into like chit chatter here depending on how much yeah. I want to put. Yeah, so I think it's more of a, more or less like utilizing their money to live comfortably on my on my own also. Having a nice house, which basically I own the land. Having yeah. an investment to run around, to have the things there. Then on top of that, I have the vehicle with a paid driver and then the investment is going to pay off for the driver. I was quite surprised that you only allocated like quite a small percentage of your, of your winnings to like things that you like, like the Rolex or like... Uh, Maybe a ticket to watch the Yankees, I don't know. If let's say you're just like a normal like person like us like that where we live on paycheck or whichever, right? Yeah. You will spend what you have. You get yes, what I mean? Correct. Because you don't have much you don't have a lot of heavy investment returns if you were to use a certain amount of money to spend. Correct. Right? So let's correct. say for example, like if you were to invest maybe say three hundred videos, five hundred bucks, right? That mm. that amount is not gonna get to a million that quickly. Yes, of course. It, it's, it's, it's not. It's not. Yeah. It's ten thousand. Compared to let's say you you put up ten thousand, ten k, twenty k, thirty k upfront. 
that one is yeah. going to take time take time to roll. So no matter what, if you get thirty percent, if you get let's say you earn back five to eight percent or thirty k, right? You're talking about you're, mm-hmm. you're earning back already a few k, at least two two plus k. The idea of more money is not really to spend on what you need; is to basically full future proof yourself yeah, to make to sure self sustainable. I think that's to be able to self sustainable or be financially free. But if you would ask yeah. me this question ten years ago, right? Definitely, I spent all the money on a lot of things. <laughs> I think what you said is very true. Like, if you ask me this ten years ago, uh, if I haven't started working and and I haven't started like seeing for myself, like my, like your parents keep complaining, hey, things keep yeah. increasing price, right? Like. It didn't feel so painful like 10, 10, 20 years ago when you were starting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's like, I go supermarket, like, hey, why the egg is like so expensive now? <laughs> I'm like, now it hurts, you know, because like I have had to start, me and my brother have had to start uh, like, yeah. buying groceries, take turns. So then it's like, wow, it's like, wow. Suddenly you feel the pain. Then like, hey, how can I like, take a few things, $50 I have to pay at NTUC? Like. Okay, so it's my turn to talk about how I'll spend my six and a half million. I think for me, I, 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 I will do it in three portions. So I'll divide okay. my six and a half million into three portions. Okay, the first portion is like Eldad says, uh, you really have to set aside either to invest, to buy property or what, whatever. You need to let the money grow. Uh. Yeah. Because I think the money nowadays, right, is really hard to say like how much a million is worth I don't know, 10 years down the road, 20 years down the road. Yeah, so I think it's important that I set a third of it to investments or properties or whatever. Well, so I see that as like, yeah, <laughs> as I see that as like, I probably just throw to the bank or I like just throw to one one agent I can trust or I probably split between three, four agents to help them manage. Like but you're, not, manage you're, but you're going to do it like, you're not going to do it like me, right? You're going to, are you doing it at like through the two point five one shot or you're going to do it like me where it's like a break up, break up, break up, break up. So I'll that is one shot. I'll just give, I'll probably find three or four people then I'll just say, this is the amount of money I have. Maybe each of you take, I don't know, 500,000, go manage. Uh, uh. Then if let's say you, you lose money within the next, I don't know, year or two years, right? Then I take it out from you then I just invest, find another person to do it only. Right? The other third, I'll split between like friends and families or like charitable causes that I like. Lah. So like for example, maybe I'll like let's say out of the two million I might give a quarter of it to my brother, a quarter of it to I don't know my cousin or a quarter of it to my dad, this kind of thing. I might go to like, oh maybe I like this uh nursing home. Or I like this uh how you say when I used to work, maybe I, I got I got very good feelings about this CC, this kind of thing. So I might uh-huh. throw a hundred thousand there, another hundred thousand there. You only invest in the, the CC near house, so you invest in Cigar. <laughs> we, we can talk about... Don't, yeah, don't mean we actually have the money, okay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, because now my office is at MacPherson, so yeah. my neighbor is a very interesting non-profit. So they, what they do is that they have a group of seniors that are like so-called social support weaker. Yeah. So that when they pass away, they don't have money to do funerals, right? Then their yeah. volunteer team will come in to help them do a day funeral. That means one day only. Uh, then uh, your family and friends can come and say goodbye. La. So I think yeah. it's like quite an interesting cause. The final third is really for how they splurging. But my own splurging is a bit diffi- different from Eldad in the sense that I don't want to buy a car. The one to, um, how do you say, I don't want to like invest in watches, this kind of thing because it's not my thing, right? Yeah, 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 that's fair. Uh, I want to invest in experiences. So what do I mean? So let's say I got two million, and then I love Christopher Nolan. Right? But Christopher Nolan is not a person that you can like. Hey, like I want to meet means I go knock on the door. Right? Yeah, you will have to meet him. Like for example, there's a charity dinner. If you donate over a hundred thousand, you will get a lunch time with him. This kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Or let's say he has an upcoming movie. I'm one of the smaller investors. I get to meet him. I think also can. Like meeting my heroes might be one of the things that I want to invest in. I, I, sorry, not investing, like to really spend money because this kind of thing you won't get it back on. Ma. Yeah. Yeah. Then if I have a leftover, right, I would like to have a hand in terms of like maybe setting up maybe a studio or like this kind of like, or you help um smaller, let's say independent filmmakers or let's say those people that want to take like stories and make into like from book into screen, this kind of thing. I think that is, I don't know why, uh, recently this process to me is like quite interesting. But- Actually, nah. that's interesting, eh? Because like technically, you can also win back your share of money Correct. from the movie, also. Correct. So actually, it's also long term, long term investment and long term money. Correct. I, Correct. I I would say that actually that's quite that's quite smart also because it's a different type of investment also. Yeah. So this one is yeah. So you are right in the sense that this one to me, I don't know why recently I'm quite interested in this process, like um how people take book and then make it into film or make it into like series lah. Yeah. Nah, and I don't know. I forget which celebrity did this. I think it's. I really forget. Is it Tina Fey or Amy Poehler? Apparently, Ooh, one of her, one of them, they set up a TikTok account, right? So what they do is that because they're celebrities, 
they review books, right? And then a lot of books, book publishers, a lot of authors are very happy because you are giving them limelight. Ma. It helps in yeah. book sales. But from their point, right, what they're doing is that they are actually seeing like on TikTok, how many views, how many, how, how viral books get. So if a book gets very viral, right, they will just pay up front and say, I want the rights to adapt this into a movie. Uh, to me, that's quite smart. So maybe that might be a model that I will want to do with my last mm. trench. Uh. Yeah. To me, that is something fun that I think, okay, la, I mean, it's touch wood really that money really grows to like wasted in the sense that because not all things that adopt adapted makes it to firm. Uh. So at yeah. least this one to me is splurging lah because it's not guaranteed returns. Yeah. I think it also is different from certain things from like me and you because I think you can you can tell from the way we say right you're more I'm more risk averse you're more risk taker. With any type of movie production right you are bound to have a risk of you're not gonna Correct. you may not even get the money back because Correct. if I say for Very example true. it yeah. doesn't do well in box office or it doesn't Correct. do well in like in like ticket sales right you're gonna lose money 100% yeah. without a doubt it goes well. Like, basically yeah. essentially you become a producer for the movie lah. But I will need to employ people to work with me la, because yeah. uh, I don't know the ins and outs. But I know that there are people that don't have the money, but they know the ins and outs. I feel like I've always wanted to do, I think maybe this one thing. Uh, let's say I've, I have the spend money uh, in advance right, and I've already splurged on what I need to splurge. I will do one boy's trip for everybody here. Yes. We, go, we all go maybe Europe. Watch, watch. We all go Europe during like, during like uh, the March to, March to May period. Find a few Champions League games to watch. Oh yes, <laughs> like go that like very fun. like go Real Madrid, like go to Bernabeu, go to yeah. Newcom, Old Trafford, Anfield. Yeah, like maybe even go San Siro. Just, just I think all of us together have an experience to just watch a couple of games. Out. I think yeah. that would be so much fun. Yeah, that will honestly be such a like fun experience. Yeah, hundred percent. Like yeah, and I think because like I don't know, I don't know for you, but I haven't really been to Anfield. Not not. Okay, not haven't really been. I really haven't been to Enfield. Yeah, so I, I think, yeah, if correct, you're yeah, correct in the sense that if really strike Toto, I want, I want to go there also. I think the only one of us who's ever been to a, like a European football stadium is Paul. And Paul only went like recently. Only. Paul went to Allianz. Oh yeah, Allianz. Yeah, he, he yeah, said in the, in the... He went to Allianz Arena, but... Football. But the rest of us, I don't think we've ever been to like a European stadium before. Business class. Business class. We take business, business class. class. Business class, you can. Uh. I don't mind. Uh. Yeah, but I, think, but I mean, it's something that I would love to do, but I need, but we need the money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it means the one thing I pray for, I was like, God, give us, give us the money for this thing. <laughs> okay. So that is for our episode. Get, get out of here. Oh, look at the time. Our coffee shop is closing. But in the meantime, if you enjoyed this episode, please remember to give it a like and subscribe. We have an episode that comes out every Monday. But if you're interested in football, we have the football kaki that drops every Wednesday with Eldad here and Paul. And if you don't have any fun game show formats, you have the LGGR podcast that drops every Friday with me and Eldad as well. Now, if you're interested in fun knockout tournaments, we have a weekly tournament pool that starts in our Instagram every Monday to Thursday where we knock out and eliminate different contenders for a topic uniquely tied to this week's Copy Bowls episode. Now, that is a recurring tournament every 12 pm and the results of the previous day was reviewed and the next round of voting starts. So hit to our Instagram to vote. Now, we hope that everyone is going to enjoy your weekend, enjoy your day, but please do not buy too much Toto. But remember, copy a day keeps your troubles away. Remember, you might you see one. If you got buy, means got hope to get one day. Mm-hmm.